Well, welcome back to Living History with Ted Goldsboro. Today, our guest continuing is Patrick McCabe, whose family had a quarry business on Rock Hill Road, and Pat's a lifelong resident of Lower Marion. We're going to be talking in this first segment about some of the construction projects that McCabe Brothers, your father's generation, did. And I wonder if we could start with that, Pat. Sure, Ted. Um, one of the major projects that McCabe Brothers uh, did back in the 1931-32 era was uh, they were the general contractor uh, for the Lower Marion School District Administration Building, right on Montgomery Avenue, uh, a building that today is considered uh, on the historic list by uh, the township. Uh, it's still there, and uh, uh, we're looking at some of the, the pictures of the, of the construction along with the uh, plaque that designates uh, the architects, the uh, contractor, and uh, I thought this was, this was very interesting. The, the, one, the one picture here has um, McKay Brothers trucks right in the foundation work for, for the school. Uh, I, this is long before my time, so I don't have much detail on this. Just know that it's a, a sense of pride to go by there and, and see that that building is still there mm -hmm. that uh, my, 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 my dad uh, yeah. had something to do with creating. The thing I remember more about Laura Marion High School, I didn't go to Laura Marion High School, Ted. I, Where'd you go, Pat? <laughs> I went to St. Joe's Prep okay. in, in town. Okay. In, We're in going Philadelphia. to be talking about that later? I think we are. Okay. Right. Uh, but. Uh, the construction of Arnold Field, the original construction of Arnold Field, which took place uh, probably um, late in 30s, the, in the late 30s, early mm -hmm. four, around yes, mm -hmm. or uh, no, I guess in the 40s. In the 40s, I'm sorry. As I recall, I recall being maybe seven or eight years old. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. When uh, my, I would in the summertime out of mm -hmm. school, I would be uh, uh, allowed to come out with Dad on a construction job, and they mm -hmm. were they were. Mm -hmm doing the grading and the construction of the field. They didn't have anything to do with the, the grandstands or anything like that. Mm -hmm. but the field and track, and, mm -hmm. and I think anybody that knows Arnold's Field had always said through the years that it was a magnificently graded mm -hmm. operation, mm -hmm. and, and that mm -hmm. I take credit for my dad mm -hmm. and, and his, his team. One of the interesting parts of that uh, boyhood memory is uh, riding in a wheelbarrow pushed by a, uh, one of the workers for McCabe Brothers uh, Contracting mm. Company, uh, and uh, his name was Jimmy McGarvey. Mm. I remember him to this mm. day. And he, just for fun? Just for fun. He, okay. uh, he, was, he was there with his wheelbarrow oh. taking dirt or something from yeah. one area to the other, and it, we didn't have a load. Uh, oh. I was allowed to jump in the wheelbarrow, oh. and he'd push me back the other <laughs> way. So that's the way yeah. you know, I, I kind of grew up with a lot of oh. those kind of uh, memories oh. of... Uh, of days gone by. I get confused, uh, personal, I get confused about Arnold Field. It was bought, I guess, in the 40s by the school district. It was the Tolan, Tolan Farm. Tolan property, yes. But it wasn't dedicated until 1950. And Hap Arnold, it was named the General Arnold Field, and sure. Hap Arnold was expected to come to the dedication. He was living in California. He was retired from the service okay. by 1950 uh -huh. from the Second World War. And uh, it was going to be a big deal, you know, General Arnold was coming to open his, yeah. but he died two weeks before the dedication. And in my mind, I think, oh, the field was built in, say, 1949, 1950, but the school district purchased it many years before right, that. And right. so the, this construction could have been back in, you know, 44, 43, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, my take on that is, uh, why didn't they name it McCabe Field? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you'll be interested to know, you probably do know, right now, they've been regrading it for what seems like a year or oh, two. Oh, yes, yes. And as I'm thinking, part oh, they're of undoing the all of McCabe work. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I wonder how much uh, difference in cost uh, was oh, between what's going on now and whatever oh, McCabe has got for, for doing that job, you yeah. know? Yes. Uh, yeah. I had noted that there was a Francis McCabe, and I remember all through my childhood, Francis McCabe was the secretary of the school board. Can you tell me anything about Francis? Other than it's just a similarity of names. I, okay. I, don't, I never met the woman. It's a Francis. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Uh, and uh, she was the long-term secretary. Mm -hmm. but, uh, 
Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't have any knowledge Okay, her. Not, not a sister or an aunt or... No. no. Okay. No. Um, now, when you were a kid, I think you told me a story that your father's contracting yeah. business yeah, was this putting is a in picture. storm sewers. Yeah, and this is a picture of the, the original Barnes uh, building on Latches Lane in uh, Marion. And uh, one of the things that McKay Brothers contractors did back in those days, in addition to quarrying and build, building homes, and was uh, they did contract work for various municipalities, townships around, suburban townships, in installing new sanitary sewers um, in, in neighborhoods that were being developed. And uh, one job that they got by virtue of a contract was uh, to install a sewer uh, on north, is it north or south? I guess it's South Latches Lane. Uh, ran between Old Lancaster Road and uh, going down towards uh, Marion Road. I don't know if it was the whole length or not. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the sewer job was uh, extensive. It, it, was, it had to be deep. I recall there were deep trenches back in those days. Uh, I, was a, I was a boy in the summertime, and I would be over there with my dad. Uh, and I recall Mr. Barnes, Albert T. Barnes, who was kind of a, an eccentric individual, and he, 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 he enjoyed the company of the common man, and I think he enjoyed my, my dad's company because he was a working man, and, that, um, and, and he would come out, and they would just chat, and uh, uh, he had a big, I don't know, it was a Packard, a big convertible car that was uh, from, the, from the probably the 1930s, and uh, I used to see him driving up and down the road in his convertible. And my dad came home from work uh, several times, and he would. Uh, this would be at the dinner table in our home at night, and Dad would 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 be sitting there saying, "Oh, you know, Pat and the family. That that man, Mr. Do Mr. Barnes, Dr. Barnes. He called him Dr. Barnes. Dr. Barnes. He, I think he's a little bit off. He. I saw him today. He's driving around in the in the convertible." With no hat on, and smoking a pipe with the top down, and it's winter time for God's sake. <laughs> so, so you know, I think uh, a lot of that uh, kind of clicked with my dad. He, he and Doctor Barnes was known as being kind of eccentric. And yes, yes, and he was. Yeah, yeah. And irascible, yeah. hard to work with. Yeah. But he yeah. did like the working man. He did like the working mm -hmm. man. Yeah. He made his money from a patent medicine called Argyrol. Argyrol. Yeah. Um, and you had remarked he'd probably drunk his R draw before he went out in the convertible. That's <laughs> yeah. why I didn't get sick. Right? right. Yes. 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 Yeah. But I know he helped fire companies. He helped the Narberth Fire Company and the Bryn Mawr Fire Company. Right. Very donated much so. to them. He had yeah. fundraisers for them. Yeah. And again, who were the fire companies made mm -hmm. up of? Working men. Oh, working men. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was going to try to dig out, but I thought I'd, I better not do it while you were talking of the picture of your father overseeing. The workman, I we don't know where it was, but and I, I I can't do it okay. right now. But uh, I put out a picture here of the property that some property that the McCabe brothers owned in Ballakinwood. So we're getting into the West Amherst project. Sure, sure. Um, this is uh, Conshohocken State Road, old Rock Hill Road we used to call it, and and the. Homes that uh, McKay Brothers, through a subsidiary corporation called Philadelphia Suburban Builders, uh, built over a period of probably 15 to 20 years, I think, uh, post Second World War up until um, the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, uh, most of it was, was on, on West Amherst Road. And uh, I recall working on these homes, some of them, as, as a High school and college kid uh, recalls sitting in, in the one of them that was for sale and uh, doing my my homework. To uh, uh, I was allowed to, to go there to a uh, oh, to a, a house that had no furniture other than a desk and a and a chair in the living room. It was for sale and it was a sample house. And I got a, got there to get away from the noise of my my younger siblings to, so I could. Do some studying mm -hmm. uh, on West Amherst. On West Amherst, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And according to these pictures, it it sort of looks as if land that 
we now know as Amherst Field belonging to Valley Kinwood Middle School had been owned by? The McCabes. The McCabes. Yeah, yeah. So I guess um, maybe the McCabes sold it to the school district, maybe. I, I, I have no knowledge of that either, mm -hmm. but I do, I do know that, that that did take place. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. over here across Conchocan State Road. And then there's another uh, section that uh, that land is in, in my dad's name. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other than two houses that McCabe's built within that tract, uh, the rest of that ground was sold off to various builders uh, lot by lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's probably 15, 10 or 15 homes that are in that mm -hmm. little section today mm -hmm. that have been there since the 50s mm -hmm. and 60s. Well, did the McKay brothers, or, or either as an association or a corporation or individually, mm -hmm. did they buy land to build houses to build to to make money? Was it speculation, kind of? Well, uh, the buying of the land was kind of before my time, also. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the the details of of how they came into uh, buying it. Uh, and, and yes, it was a it was a profit making mm -hmm. thing. And my uncle Tom, I mentioned this before, was the one who supervised most of the home building operation, with uh, an assist from the other brothers from from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, but as Uncle Tom got older, and as I told you, he was the first one to die. Uh, that particular phase of the business just kind of kind of phased out. Okay. Um, um, and uh, and and there wasn't that much land left by yes, that time. The school district right. had taken the uh, okay. the piece for for their athletic fields. Mm -hmm. um, well, and, Pat, uh, I, I really appreciate your telling me about this, okay, and uh, we'll hope to have you back to to keep uh, going on this. We uh, want to show uh, some pictures of some of the houses that were built on that land. Sure. So. Uh, this is Ted Goldsboro with Living History, and we've been talking to Patrick McCabe, and we'll hope to have Pat back for another show. Looking forward to it.